welcome back. There are several false etymologies uh, regarding why amateur radio operators are called hams, likely an example of corporate wishful thinking. One such tale is that Hammerlin products were supposedly so preeminent in the pioneering era of radio that, that they became part of the language of radio. As the story goes, early radio enthusiasts affectionately called Hammerlin products ham products, and they called themselves ham operators. In truth, Hammerlin was a minor and barely known company when the term ham started being used. Regardless of the origin, ham radio and ham operators are here to stay. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is lesson one, part six of my amateur radio technician license course covering the 2022 to 2026 question pool. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, and my call sign is Kilo Echo 2 Gulf Sierra. I hold an amateur extra license and I've been teaching amateur radio for over 15 years. The sub element T1 section covers the commission's rules from the Federal Communications Commission, FCC. On your exam, six questions will be selected randomly from sub element T1. The commission's rules are divided into six groups with a total of 67 questions. Today, we're going to cover Tango 1 Foxtrot station identification, repeaters, third-party communications, club stations, and FCC inspections. We need to know a station and its records must be available for FCC inspection at any time upon request by an FCC representative. We know this from part 97.103, station license responsibilities. The station licensee must make the station and the station records available for inspection upon request by an FCC representative. On the exam, the question is like this. When must the station and its records be available for FCC inspection? A, at any time 10 days after notification by, uh, by the FCC of such an inspection. B, at any time upon the request of an FCC representative. C, at any time after written notification by the FCC of such inspection. D, only when presented with a valid warrant by the FCC official or a government agent. If you answer B, at any time upon request from an FCC representative, you are correct amundo. It's good to know that when using technical call signs, such as uh, RACI's headquarters, you must identify your FCC assigned call sign at the end of each communication and every 10 minutes during a communication. This comes from part 97.119, station identification. It explicitly says each amateur station, except the space station or telecommand station, must transmit its assigned call sign on its transmitting channel at the end of each communication and at least every 10 minutes during the communication for the purpose of clearly making the source of the transmission from the station known to those receiving the transmissions. No station may transmit unidentified communications or signals or transmit as a station call sign, any call sign not authorized to the station. The exam question looks like this. How often must you identify with your FCC assigned call sign when you send a tactical call sign such as Bryce's headquarters? A, never, the tactical call sign is sufficient. B, once during every hour. C, at the end of each communication and every 10 minutes during a communication. D, at the end of every transmission. If you answered C, at the end of each communication and every 10 minutes during the communications, you're a quick study. You need to know that you must transmit your assigned call sign at least every 10 minutes during and at the end of a communication. This also comes from part 97.119 that we read in the slide before. Again, 
understand that each amateur station, except the space station or telecommand station, must transmit its assigned call sign on its transmitting channel at the end of each communication and at least every 10 minutes during a communication for the purpose of clearly making the source of the transmission from the station known to those receiving the transmission. No station may transmit unidentified communications or signals or transmit as a station call sign any call sign not authorized to the station. The question will look something like this. When are you required to transmit your assigned call sign? A, at the beginning of each contact and every 10 minutes thereafter. B, at least once during each transmission. C, at least every 15 minutes during and at the end of the communication. D, at least every 10 minutes during and at the end of a communication. The answer we're looking for is D, at least every 10 minutes during and at the end of a communication. Is that what you thought? We need to know that you must use English for identification when operating on a phone subband. Here's another question from part 97.119, station identification. It states, the call sign must be transmitted with an emission authorized for the transmitting channel in one of the following ways. The way this refers to is by a phone emission in the English language. Use of a phonetic alphabet as an aid for correct station of identification is encouraged. The question reads, what language may you use for identification when operating on a phone subband? A, any language recognized by the United Nations. B, any language recognized by the ITU. C, English. D, English, French, or Spanish. Did you get the correct answer? C, English is correct. You need to know the two methods of a call sign identification required for station transmitting phone signals are sending a call sign when using a CW or phone emission. Yet another question that comes from part 97.119 station identification. It reads that the call sign must be transmitted with an emission authorized for the transmitting channel in one of the following ways. I, a CW emission, when keyed by an automatic device used only for identification, the speed must not exceed 20 words per minute. Or secondly, by a phone emission in the English language, use of the phonetic alphabet as an, as an aid for correct station notification is encouraged. Note there is a third, but we don't need to know that for this exam. The question might look something like this. What method of call sign identification is required for a station transmitting phone signals? A, send the call sign followed by the indicator RPT. B, send the call sign using a CW or phone emission C, send the call sign followed by the indicator R, or D, send the call sign using only a phone emission. I hope you answered B, send the call sign using CW or phone emission. The following self-assigned indicators are acceptable when using the phone transmission. Kilo Lima 7 Charlie Charlie Stroke Whiskey 3, Kilo Lima 7 Charlie Charlie Slant Whiskey 3. Kilo Lima 7 Charlie Charlie Slash Whiskey 3. From part 97.119, station identification, we see that one or more indicators may be included with a call sign. Each indicator must be separated from the call sign by the slant mark by or by a suitable word that denotes the slant mark. If an indicator is self-assigned, it must be included before, after, or both before and after the call sign. No self-assigned indicator may conflict with any other indicator specified by the FCC rules or with any prefix assigned by another country. 
The question looks something like this. Which of the following self-assigned indicators are acceptable when using a phone transmission? Alpha, Kilo Lima 7, Charlie Charlie Stroke, Whiskey 3, Bravo, Kilo Lima 7, Charlie Charlie Slant, Whiskey 3, Charlie, Kilo Lima 7, Charlie Charlie Slash, Whiskey 3, or D, all of the, all these choices are correct. With the answer being D, all these choices are correct. We need to know that when a non-licensed person is allowed to speak to a foreign station using a station under the control of a licensed amateur operator, the foreign station must be in a country that has a third party agreement with the United States. This comes from part 97.115, third party communications. It says that an amateur station may transmit messages for a third party to any station within the jurisdiction of any foreign government when transmitting emergency or disaster relief communications and any station with the juris within the jurisdiction of any foreign government whose administration has made agreements with the United States to allow amateur radio stations to be used for transmitting international communications on the behalf of third parties. No station shall transmit messages for a third party to any station within the jurisdiction of any foreign government whose administration has not made such an arrangement. This prohibition does not apply to a message for any third party who is eligible to be a control operator of the station. Our question is, which of the following restrictions apply when a non-licensed person is allowed to speak to a foreign station using a station under the control of a licensed amateur operator? A, the person must be a US citizen. B, the foreign station must be in a country with, with which the US has a third party agreement. C, the licensed control operator must do the station identification. D, all of these are correct. Did you answer B? The foreign station must be in a country which the US has a third party agreement. If you did, spectacular. We need to understand that a third party communication is a message from a control operator to another amateur station control operator on the behalf of another person. We know this from part 97.3 definitions. Third party communications is defined as a message from a control operator, first party, of an amateur station to another amateur station control operator, second party, on behalf of another person or third party. The exam question looks like this. What is the definition of a third party communication? Alpha, a message from a control operator to another amateur station control operator on behalf of another person. B, amateur radio communications where three stations are in communications with one another. C, operation when a tra the transmitting equipment is licensed to a person other than the control operator. D, temporary authorization for an unlicensed person to transmit on the amateur bands for technical experiments. Did you answer A, a message from a control operator to another amateur station control operator on the behalf of another person? Good job if you did. Remember that I said we would talk more about repeaters later? A repeater station is a type of amateur station that simultaneously retransmits another amateur station signal on a different channel or channels. It comes from part 97.3 definitions. It defines a repeater as an amateur station that simultaneously retransmits the transmission of another amateur station on a different channel or channels. We might see this question. What type of amateur station simultaneously retransmits the signal of another amateur station on a different channel or channels? A, a beacon, B, a station, C, repeater station, or D, message forwarding station. Did you get the correct answer? It's C, repeater station. 
We need to know that the control operator of the originating station is accountable if a repeater inadvertently retransmits communications that violates the FCC rules. In part 97.205 repeater station, we learned that the control operator of a repeater that retransmits inadvertently communications that violate the rules in this part is not accountable for the volatile communications. The question reads, who is accountable if a repeater inadvertently retransmits communications that violate the FCC rules? Alpha, the control operator of the origination station. Bravo, the control operator of the repeater. Charlie, the owner of the repeater. D, or Delta, both the originating station and the repeater owner. Did you answer A, the control operator of the originated station? If so, you're correct. The last rule that we need to know for the exam is a club must have at least four members for a club station to be issued a license grant. This comes directly from part 97.5 station license required under the section covering a club station license grant. It states, and I quote, the club must be composed of at least four persons. The question is as follows. Which of the following is a requirement for the issuance of a club station license grant? A, the trustee must have an amateur extra class operator's license grant. B, the club must have at least four members. C, the club must be registered with the amateur Radio Relay League, or D, all these choices are correct. If you answered B, the club must have at least four members, you're 100% correct. This is the end of lesson one, part six. And this is the end of lesson one. In the next lesson, we will learn about operating procedures and other practical information you need to know as technical class operators. We will end this with another quote from Albert Einstein. He once said, intelligence is not the ability to store information, but to know where to find it. Until next time, my friends, never stop learning.